Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the leak out question word break. Alright, so in this question we're given a non-empty string s and a dictionary word dict which contains a list of non-empty words. Determine if s can be segmented into space separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. Okay, so this over here is pretty important. It has to be one or more dictionary words. So in the beginning, I thought that you have to use all the dictionary words, but no, you just have to use at least one. Okay, and note the same word in the dictionary may be reused multiple times in the segmentation, uh, but the dictionary does not contain uh, duplicate words. So for example, over here, our string has a uh, lead code, right? And uh, you can separate this into two words. So we have lead over here and we have code over here, sorry, code over here, and both of them do exist inside of our word dictionary over here. So that's why we end up returning true. Similarly, over here we have apple, pen, apple. So what happens is we have the word apple, then we have the word pen, and notice that they're both in our dictionary. And we, again, we have the word apple, right? So like we said earlier, the words can be reused, okay? So yeah, that's gonna be true again. But over here, this is over, this over here is gonna be false. And the reason for that is because we have cats, right? And cats is in our dictionary, or we have just the word cat. So if we just go with cat, then the next word is gonna be sand. And if we went with cats, our next word would be and, and they're all in our dictionary over here. But the problem is at the ending, these two words over here, OG, are going to get left out. And not all, uh, not always OG, so let's say we took dog over here, then some of the words over here would get, uh, A-N would get left out, right? So there's always going to be some words which are not in our dictionary that we see over here. So we also need to account for that, and that's why this over here is considered to be false. So let's see how we can use dynamic programming in order to solve this. Okay, so I'm going to be going on with our same example of lead code over here, and this over here is our dictionary. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to have an array. And what this array represents over here is going to represent whether the word exists from the very beginning up to a certain word. What do I mean by that? So what this uh, basically means is that, and by the way, everything's going to start off as false, but we will change that as we go around. So what I mean by this is this over here is going to represent the zero index. And what this tells us, it represents the word which goes up to the zero index. So in this case, the zeroth index has the word L. And notice it goes up to, but not including that letter. So if it goes up to L, it means it's just going to be an empty string. So this over here is going to be an empty string. Now this over here, the second one, we have, we're at E right now. So this means everything up to E. So that is going to include the letter L. So this over here has the letter L. Then this over here is going to go up to this second E. So that has L E. So I'm pretty sure you get the point. So this has uh, L E E, and this is going to be L E E T, and then L E E T C, L E E T C O, and then over here. Okay, and one more thing, I added one more uh, value over here. That's because I didn't have enough in the beginning. Okay, and then over here we're going to have L E E T C O D, and finally this over here is going to have the entire word lead code. Now, if you notice, the length of this array over here is going to be whatever the length of our string is plus one. And the reason for that is because while we're doing that, what's going to happen is we're going to get the entire word as well, right? So if we only went up to the length of S, so only up to the length of this, we would only have gotten up to L-E-E-T-C-O-D. But if you added one more, which is this over here, we have the entire word, which is lead code. Now, one thing we want to do is before we start on with our further steps, is we want to change this over here to true because this over here is an empty string, right? So that basically already exists. So this over here, instead of false, we're going to say it's true. And one more time, what this represents is does the word exist? So everything up to, for, let's just look at this over here. So everything up to this over here gives us the value lead and lead does exist inside of our dictionary. So what's going to happen in that case is we're going to change this false to true. But before we do that, we have a few steps. We want to consider one more thing, which is, is everything up to that word already satisfied? So those are the two conditions that we want to satis uh, look at. And let's see how we can do that. So uh, I'm just directly going to go to this over here, since uh, over here, uh, if nothing's really going to be changing. But over here, we have a word lead. So what's going to happen is we're going to be doing two checks. The first check we're going to do is we're going to check if everything up to this word is already filled, right? And only if everything up to this word is already filled 
only then we can uh, account for this word. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this current index. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's an index 4. And what is the length of our word lead? It has a length of 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 4 minus 4, which gives us a value of 0. So we're going to go to our 0th index, which is this over here, and we're going to check if it has a value of true. And if it does have a value of true, that means that everything up to that has been accounted for. And in this case, this is true. So that means that we can go on to our next check. Now our next check is to see if this word over here exists inside of our dictionary. And it does. So lead does exist as one of our words. So what's going to happen since both of those are true, this is going to end up becoming true. So instead of false, this over here ends up becoming true. So now let's just keep going through this. Nothing is going to change until we go to the very ending over here. So now what happens in the very ending? So we have the word lead code, and that's the entire word. So over here, we're going to be doing the similar steps. So the first thing is we want to check is everything up to this over here satisfied, or is everything up to there accounted for as one of the words in our dictionary? So to do that, we're currently at the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth index. Now we're going to do eight minus four since that's the length of code. So eight minus four gives us a value of four. Now we're going to go to the fourth index and it has a value of true. So that's one of our conditions. And now the second condition is going to be, is this word actually, does it actually exist inside of our dictionary? Now we actually have the word lead code, right? So we can do one of two things to this word. So this is the word that we currently have. We can just start looking from, so it has a length of four. So we can just go back four spaces. So go over here and just check everything from here up to here and see if that exists. And it does, so that does exist as one of our words. But an easier way we can do with Python is we can use the ends with function. And what that's going to do, it's going to check if this word ends with the word code. And it does, right? So lead code ends with code. So then in that case, that also becomes true. So what we're going to do finally over here is we're going to change this over here to true. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. So this over here becomes true. Now, how do we actually return our final answer? Our final answer is going to be whatever the last element here is. So if this is true, our final answer is true. If it's false, our final answer is false. Now, how exactly does that make sense? So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to change our dictionary. So instead of being lead code, I'm going to change this word to be lead C. So that's going to be our word. And the other word is going to be code. So let's see how this works. So one more thing, let's just reset this value over here. So this is going to end up becoming false, and this also just going to become false, right? Since we're just resetting everything. So false over here, false over here. So now what's going to happen is nothing's going to happen once we go to the word lead. But once we go to the word lead C, over here, this is going to end up becoming true. Now the reason for that is because lead C exists inside of our dictionary. So I'll just use the color red, and this over here is now true, okay? So similarly, now let's go to our very ending, and we have the word lead code. Now over here, we have two checks. So the first thing is, does code exist? Well, code does exist as one of our words, but before that, we need to check if everything up to that is actually satisfied for. And in order to do that, what we want to do is we're going to do eight minus four, right? Since four is the length of our code, and we're going to go to our fourth index, which is this over here. Now this value over here is false. So what that basically means is that everything up to the C over here has not been accounted for. And that means that we do not have a valid answer yet. So what's going to happen is this over here is not going to change and it's going to end up staying with the value of false. So this over here is going to be false and we're going to end up returning false. And that makes sense because the C over here has already been accounted for inside of the word lead C. And in order to make this true, if you didn't want to make it true, instead of using the word lead code, you could use the word L-E-E-T-C and then code again. Now, if you did it on this over here, this would end up giving us a value of true. So hopefully all of that did make sense. I tried to go through most of the cases. And now let's see how we can actually implement this using code. So let's start off by defining our dynamic programming array. So this is going to be a list and it's going to have a value of false. And what is the length of it going to be? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same length of s plus one. And I explained why we're doing plus one, because we also want to get the word, the entire word by itself as well. Okay, so one more thing we did earlier is that the first instance of this is actually true. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the plus one, and I'm going to make the first instance of this true. 
So what this is doing is the first instance is true and everything after that uh, up to the length of s is going to be false. So that over there is our dynamic programming array. So now we're going to go inside of a for loop. So we're going to be getting the index of our string s. Now what exactly are we going to be getting? So for this we're going to do range and we're going to start off at the first index. And the reason for that is because the zeroth index has already been accounted for. So that's where we're starting from the first index and we're going to go up to the length of s plus one. And the reason for that is because this over here has a, a length of length of s plus one. Okay, so now that we have this, what we're going to do is now we're going to iterate through each of the words inside of our word dictionary. So for word in word dict. Okay, the reason we're going through each of our words is we want to compare and see if any of our current words is actually inside of our dictionary. Okay, and now we're going to do the two checks that we had. So first, let's do the first check. So over here, we're going to check if everything up to this word has already been accounted for. So in order to do that, we're going to go to our dynamic programming area. We're going to go to our current index and we're going to subtract that by the length of our word. And in this case, if it does come as true, that means that everything up to that current word has been uh, accounted for inside of our dictionary. So we currently have this. And after this, we have a second check. So over here, we're going to check if everything up to the certain index actually is one of our words in the dictionary. So to do that in Python, we can just use the ends with function. So we're going to go to our string, go to everything up to our index, and we're going to use ends with. And what are we checking it for? We're checking it for the word. And if both of these come as true, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our dynamic programming array, go to the current sorry index that we're on, and we're going to make that value true. And that's going to be it. So at the very ending of this, if the last value inside of our dynamic program array is true, then in that case, we're just going to end up returning uh, whatever that is. So return dp negative one and negative one just gives us the very last value. If it's true, it's true or else it's false. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.